there is a course work, yeah? For the course work, there are few parts. Part A is a problem about deep excavation in London. Thought that you already got those things, right? That's from actually real case study. Then that, that's actually a real building in London, uh, right? So, so what the course work is about is when you do that deep excavation, right? So the building is 100 meter wide, one meter long. So you're gonna do a, uh, and it is going down nine meters deep, right? So in that particular coursework, what you need is to find out for that wall, what is the deflection, ground settlement, all the things. So in handout today, I gave you how to do it. I gave you the required things, right? So if you look at handout, so what we are doing there is so the building is 100 meter by 20 meters. Yeah, that's the footprint of the building. We take a session here. So I have got. There's a prop here. So you can take the prop as rigid. And here's the clay, London clay. Right? So, in the simplified way, how we don't use the Plaxi software, 3D, it costs you a lot of money, 15 grand. Then, then you need somebody, a well trained person to run it. It's not easy to do it. So often what you do is a very simple hand calculation to find out things. So, this wall is 600 mm uh, diameter and 900 apart. So that's the wall. And it's embedded at embedded 5 meters. And this is around 9.8 meters, yeah? This is around 9.8 meters, isn't it? So you are digging a 9.8 meter. So in a simplified way, what you can do, you can assume that the that's the point of rotation. So the wall will rotate. So this being a rigid prop, you can assume this is what that's the deflection. So you need to calculate what is this deflection and then find out the deflection here, right? And how that will affect the nearby buildings. That can be important buildings, right? And how much is the deflection due to the excavation? That point of rotation is just the center of the point? It's the center of the embedment. That's the assumption for simplifying it, right? Allowable. Allowable. Allowable is you don't want it to crack. You don't want the windows to crack. Hmm? Let it check the code of practice. That's all given you in that so course. How much it will allow if that thing settles there by that, will you crack there or not? If there's a crack, you've got to repair it. If the underground tunnel moves, you pay one million pound a day. If the un underground tunnel moves by half a million, one, five millimeter, you pay one million pound a day. If there's a 10 foot asset, 10 quarter pipe, you have to put a lining there, still lining inside. Right? So you have to edit those things. Yeah, so what I have done, I have given you the methods that is required in a, so that it is readily available for you to do it. And I have also given you the numbers that you can use for these calculations. Yeah? Is there any, is there any question on this one? Thank you. 
Okay, so that's number one. Is there any question from number one? Is there any question? What is it? You can get the big bang in some extra Okay, so that's number one. So this involves some calculations, isn't it? Some some calculations. Mainly by calculating or accept, right? If somebody wants, they can use uh, they, they can use uh, if somebody loves to use taxes or whatever, they can use whatever, right? Okay. So what I said is that it should be short and concise. So we have to give the summary in the main text, and every written part has to be in the appendix, not in the main text. Don't put in the main text calculation. Put the appendix, right? But the outcome, what you get from them, them should come in the main text. And you have to give some inference. Why? What does it mean? All these things. So you give your own judgment. Right? Second part has got five questions. Out of that, the first four were done by students from the last few years. So every year I give new, new questions. These are very important because if you know what went wrong, you will not do it again. Yeah? Okay? So, what I've done, number one case study, uh, if you see the number uh, here, the, 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 the summary here. So, one, two, three, and four. This should be five. When well, I started doing six, then I dropped off one. I thought it is too much for the coursework. Mm -hmm. So, my approach is it should be, it should be fine. So, uh, number one is a building, a completely approved, a file supported building in Japan. Yeah? See, this is very important because no course of practice has got guidelines about how to design files in, in soils that, that can liquefy as well as that can be tsunami hazard. So anything you do in uh, coastal villages, coastal areas, how do you tackle issues there? Okay, so uh, I've given you the solutions from last year, right? Some have done really good job, I've put them there. So read that one and reflect on the thing, right? right? So things like, what will be your design basis if you were to do a design of a file supported structure in a coastal village, what would you what would you design <coughs> against? What are the failure mechanisms you must check? Right? That sort of thing. So what you what you learn from this case too? The number one. So I've given you all the references, many things, the how the pile looked like, the pile uh, reinforcement, building geometry, everything is there. Right? Second case study is about uh, this tall structure or shallow foundation and why killed. So basically, the this building, this thing failed in 1913. And if you look into the main equation for BL capacity, it was in 1944. So, these predates the theory about bearing capacity, right? So at that time, nobody knew how to calculate. So they will keep on putting a load on, on our structure to see at what load it fails. And somehow, they, they did a small plate load test. So what they did, they, they took a small plate and applied a load to see at what load it fails. And they tried to extrapolate that plate load test to a bigger structure. 
by the way, couldn't quite get the similarities, right? So it's a quite a good learning curve that how do you extrapolate results? If you do some work, can you extrapolate everything or you extrapolate the mechanism, right? So that's, that's quite important. So this, this is quite a quite important learning lesson, learning things. <clears throat> Number three is about two, again, a chord structure close to one another. And they one. Obviously, if you are very close together, what happens? So this, this same soil is supporting both these structures. Right? And you can overstress that soil and you have a problem like that. What is the lesson to be learned? Suppose you are doing a building design and you saw already one building here and you are doing another building next to it. Right? There is only a narrow road. What would you do? So it is a very good soil. It is a very, very good competent soil. You have got one building there, the narrow road in a very busy city. And a developer wants to build another one building next to it. And you can see that if everything is fine, you can put a rough foundation, would you do it? Can you use and exactly. So what you do, you don't what you do, you have the load transfer to deeper layer. So it somehow altered the load transfer to the ground. You don't use similar same soil to be loaded again by another building. Right? So when you are doing another structure close to it, you have to, look into, you have to think about other issues. So don't really think about one building and or do, do a survey of the local, all the buildings nearby. Yeah? So this is already done by the previous guys. So what you need is to read that thing. What I want you to learn this case studies. There's a lot of learning values there, which you cannot learn otherwise. Yeah? So first part is the part, first question is about calculation. Then this case study is 1, 2, 3, 4 are about reading. You know the answers, you reflect, learning points, simple sketches, explain. <clears throat> so, this is, this is, and then I give Alan building, that's also fascinating building. A very, very fascinating uh -huh. case study. Right? So this building, the, the whole building collapsed. And the reason was, so they are doing a, so they, they dug some ground to make underground compound, that would have been fine. But they took the soil, put it here, 10 meter high, that become 10 meter high apply a surcharge load. Yeah? So therefore, another lesson, not only design, how you will construct it. So your job doesn't end by doing the design. How will you put it in place? And in that process, are you applying more load or are you exceeding the capacity? Yeah? Again, another learning curve. So perhaps if you remember the course, uh, the first or second lecture on this workflow or the flow chart for a foundation design is that. So what do you need for design, right? Is there any question so far? So these are mainly reading those sample coursework and then putting your own reflection on foundation design. Yeah? Is there any question? Anybody? No? <clears throat> okay. Final one. This is new. This was the Condeep platform, Condeep structure. Yeah? And when they are trying to install it, it sort of failed. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So what you want is to do a bit of a bit of a, this is only new part, isn't it? So you got to study what went wrong. And I can tell you one important thing is what you'll find out probably 
don't jump into numerical straight away. Because anybody doing it for design can check that at that water depth, at that pressure, that wall would have failed. You need a simple hand calculation. So don't jump into, we have now a tendency to go on to numerical and whatever, but we don't know how to check those numerical numbers. Right? So, uh, this would be, there will be a lot more of these things in the coming days because we are over relying on numerical analysis and we don't know how to check those numbers. Your job is to check, I got this number, is it looking right? It should be 10 or, or 100 or 1000. Right? So, <clears throat> is it okay? Is there, is there any question so far? I also given you some articles from this particular case study. Is there any questions? And if you have any questions, put it in, in your discussion board so that all will know and you can help one another. Right? And I will also go double time and respond to this. Yeah? But this is a very important part actually. So you will learn a lot by studying these case studies, <coughs> and then you put some simple numbers that you know what is the order of magnitude? Do we expect this sort of failure? Okay. Yeah? Okay, so <clears throat> what we can now do is what I would say we have learned last week. Uh, file design, then file and case and design. So what I will say, we can start um, the file capacity problem. Okay? And I will see if I can have the PowerPoint here so that I can think quickly go through some of the. Uh, you know, So I will, I will quickly summarize last week's lecture, okay? Quickly, the important points. Yeah? Before I start. Mm -hmm. Okay? Is there any question so far? You? I will quickly go to the slides. Stop me if you want me to discuss a bit more on that. Okay. So here the main point was why we need deep foundation because in some cases the surface soil can't take the load or can take the load, but it would deform more, settle more. That's not allowable or can't be sustained by the structure for its performance. So in that, in that case, what we do, we try to have the load transfer to deeper layers. Okay, and there can be two types. One is a caisson, one is a pile. When do you use caissons? Anybody? When do we use caissons? Offshore, yes, and large, yeah. Important bridges in a river that is huge discharge. So the, it will be scarred heavily. So if you put a big one, it, sort of, it, it, it helps, right? So here's one example. What you can see, that's a bridge, a road and a rail bridge together. It's large dynamic loads, heavy bridge in a wide river. And if you have a, you can have different shapes. Perhaps this double D shape is used if you have a double deck, sort of double lane, and a train, you know, this helps with the scour. So, so, so you can have a 
low maintenance in terms of rock dumping other things to avoid scrolling. Yeah? Here's one, one example, what I went through, and then we thought about what are the things to consider for foundation design. Ultimate limit state. So under any load, the thing should not settle. That means you will not lose the point. Other can be SLS, with what is the allowable deflection or allowable uh, frequency. Then your dynamic loads, extreme loads, accidental loads, and other things. So then we found out a way how we can take it for, for design. Often what you need for these structures, if you are carrying a dynamic load, say for example a railway or a whatever, you will find out the natural frequency of the whole structure. So here a simple way is we model the whole thing by putting some springs. Yeah? And these springs you can get from codes or practices. Like Eurocode 8 part 5 can give you those spring numbers depending on the round profile and the pile geometry. Meaning pile length, diameter, wall thickness. Yeah? And this can be used to do your calculations. And again, for those things, they normally have the ground classified into few types, homogeneous, linear, parabolic, because if you want to do this calculation in a finite element, you need a 3D software, experienced person, lots of small parameters to be able to do a proper job. So it might take you a week, a week's, a week's job. So week's job means 40 hours of a good engineer, say uh, hourly, hourly rate of say 200 pounds an hour, and checking done by a senior guy, and another 10% time. Plus license for one week or one month of that software. But that will cost you, if you use a simplified ways, like by equations, given in course of practice, take you only five minutes. Put it in Excel, you can get it. Right? Other ways to, once you do by finite element, you can check these numbers by what does this simplified hand calcs give you. Right? And always check what it has done. So this, this will give you those three components. So you can see the stiffness in HH is the lateral direction. <coughs> MM is the moment direction, <coughs> moment stiffness. That's the coupling term. If you remember, I, I explained that the coupling term comes from because. Can you remember anybody? What's the coupling term? Anybody? Coupling term? What, what's that? What's the coupling term? So, if you have foundation, that's the foundation head. So you apply a load of lateral load and moment, right? So the lateral load, so you will have that is your shape. That's the shape, that yeah. Okay, so moment and say lateral load H. Moment will give you rotation here, theta, and this will give you delta, right? So moment and lateral load. And you want to get theta and delta. Right? So, 2 by 1 matrix, 2 by matrix, this must be 2 by 2 matrix. So, this will be K M M, that's a coupling term, K M H, K M H, and K H. Okay, that's the coupling term. 
the physical meaning is this. If we have a cantilever beam, we apply a lateral load. So you get a deflection, right? And this is, anybody what's that deflection? P L Q by 3 I. And what's that angle here? Deflection? Theta, theta, yeah. what, what is e. theta? In terms of E I. Anybody? Come on. Uh, how many are doing structures? Structure let us see. JD. He doesn't know these this things. What do you do? He has to learn it. <laughs> <laughs> so, theta is P L C two I, yeah? So, the lateral load will give you deflection. So, when delta is equal to 1, you get K lateral is 3 L I L cubed. But lateral load also gives you rotation. So, this is the coupling term. So when you apply moment, what is the deflection? When you apply load, what is the rotation? Yeah? So that is the coupling term, right? Yeah, so moment giving you deflection is that term, right? That you need for compatibility of load and displacement. Yeah? So once you can get those three terms, you can easily use those things to work out um, what you need, right? Mm -hmm. Now, um, is there any question so far? Is there any question so far? Anybody? Good. <coughs> So then we looked into these bridge failures and other things, right? And how do we model? And then we went on to offshore foundations, offshore piles, and how do we put them in place, and other things. Now, in terms of exam, or in terms of <coughs> engineering calculations, what you need, what we need is capacity of pile, right? So, what I will say, I will just go through the capacity. Many of you already know that, already learned. So, we will do some tutorial questions on that. Right? In the exam, you can expect a question around these lines. Because uh, what do you ask? You can ask, ask some mathematical things. You can like, make you read many things and, you know, in your coursework, make you work hard in the, in the coursework. But exam will be, should be straightforward. Because I don't want to. Test your uh, test what you don't know in the exam. And I will see what you know in the exam rather than what you don't know. So it should be fairly straightforward. So uh, one thing often comes the exam is a basically a pile capacity. Right? Okay? But this being MSc course, it won't be a simple one, it will be a bit little test twist here and there. So it will be plugged, unplugged, that's all the question. So what I would say. Uh, the capacity can be a plug unplugged, right? So you remember I was doing it last week. What does plugging means? Plugging means because these are steel tubular piles. So steel tubular piles, if it plugs means that the bottom part acts like a closed ended pile, is a plug pile. So in this case, the capacity will be the outside friction and the total end bearing. Yeah. If it is unplugged, that means you have friction inside and outside and the bearing in the annulus ring part. You take the lower of the two as a capacity. Yeah? So what I would say, if you do an uh, example problem, uh, you may okay now. 
this is why when I explain the plugging and plugging, what I would say, you take the capacity and you, uh, so that's for sand and that's for clay, right? So in your tutorial sheet, there should be two questions, one for sand and one for clay. So you can start that so that you can quickly go through the issues there, okay? Do you have the computer machines? I'll give you a print out. How about the it? So I've given you the, uh, that's the API capacity. Let me see uh, if I've got the print out. Uh, the, uh, okay. So file capacity. So you have done up to 13, yeah? Done up to uh, 13, yeah? Which one? Uh, up to uh, is this uh, 13 is the shallow foundation? Yeah? So you can start up to 14, 15, etc. So what I would say, first with the capacity, and then we will look into the other issues. So here is a capacity question number 17 is one question on clay. And then another one question on sand is maybe 18. So we'll do 17, 18. Okay? Yeah, yeah. That's the. It is 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 the